Fat cat, fat cat, eating all the grain. So sad, tears like rain. Fat cat, fat cat. Hello and welcome to this week's episode of How to Be a Great GM. My name is Guy. We're doing special format at the moment, kind of going back old school whilst I'm in recovery from surgery, which hopefully will be going well. Now, I had another question posed to me, or a challenge, I would say, posed to me by the author 13 on our discord.gg forward slash great GM server. They wanted me to adapt an episode of Star Trek, the original series called The Trouble with Trouble tribbles into a fantasy adventure with dwarves and feywild rabbits rather than Klingons and Tribbles. The Trouble with Tribbles, as a TV series, is considered one of the greatest of the original series ever done. It's one of the few comic ones It's specifically meant to be funny. And 30 years later uh, was a Emmy award-winning episode of another Star Trek franchise, Deep Space Nine, called Trials and Tribulations. What a lot of people didn't know, and I didn't know this either, but I started to do some research on this particular episode and discovered that the Tribbles, the little balls of fluff, were an actual fact inspired by a Robert Heinlein novel um, called Rolling Stones, and they were flat cats. Flat cats. So taking that into consideration, I thought it would be appropriate to, instead of using Feywild rabbits, to use Feywild fat cats instead. They're kind of an opposite of Heinlein's flat cats, and definitely not a tribble. So, taking the episode beat by beat, I started to work out the plot. I say plot, but it would be because this is a pre-written adventure. In this particular adventure, especially in the original series plot, there isn't very strong a plot. It's pretty straightforward what happens. The crew of the Enterprise are summoned to a space station to guard some grain. At the same time, on board the station are a bunch of rowdy Klingons who have a bit of a bar fight, and then that's about it. A trader brings some Tribbles to the station, and the Tribbles start to multiply, and there's a worry that the Tribbles will get into the grain. Except that by the time they are scanning the grain, they discover that the Tribbles that have been eating the grain are now all dying because the grain's been poisoned. Fingers are pointed at the Klingons, and the Klingons deny this. Now, Tribbles, by the way, react very poorly to Klingons. They shriek and shiver and shudder and that sort of thing. In a twist, but not yet really a twist, when the assistant to the uh, station manager comes in, a human, the Tribbles shriek again and the Federation crew discover that they're actually a Klingon in disguise and that they were the ones who sabotaged the grain. It's not riveting stuff. It was 1960s television. And would it make a fantastic episode, a great episode, or a great adventure? I didn't think so. So I expanded my search and looked at Trials and Tribulations, the Deep Space Nine episode, where the characters from Deep Space Nine went back in time to the 1960s episode and interacted there. They won some Emmys for their efforts in terms of the special effects. It's a really good episode. If you've watched the first original series episode, of course. So I thought, well, their plot was a bit more robust. Things had changed in terms of our narrative structures and things ever so slightly for television. And then there, there was a second twist. A bomb had been planted on the station as well as the grain being destroyed. The crew of the Deep Space Nine crew, anyway, had to go back and remove this bomb before it exploded, also changing the timeline. I decided that that was much more interesting than the Trials and Tribulations plot that was going on. And so I incorporated the two and then translated it into Fat Cats from the Feywild, because Feywild Fat Cats just sounds awesome to say out loud. You should try it. Go ahead. Try it. Feywild Fat Cats. Feywild Fat Cats. Feywild Fat Cats. All right. So what is the adventure now? Well, I took the adventure into Dungeon Fog and I translated it into an actual ba -ba adventure, which you can download from our website. Go and enjoy that. Big thank you to the author 13 for suggesting it, again, on our discord.gg forward slash great GM server. And so the adventure runs thusly. If you're going to play in this adventure, you should probably just hit the like button and leave the episode now. Our heroes are summoned by Lord Bavis. And yes, I have... Um, 
just taken the name directly from the Star Trek episode. Anyway, uh, Lord Barris summons the PCs to a citadel and informs the PCs that they have huge shipments of grain, that they are ready to start moving into the Underdark to feed the Dark Elves who are suffering from a famine. The trade between Dark Elves and the surface is a bit contentious, but at the same time, it keeps everyone happy and peaceful which is important. The PCs are on guard duty when they discover that there is a rather rowdy group of dwarves who have come to the Citadel for rest and relaxation and are in the tavern. These dwarves accuse the PCs of not being able to protect a watermelon, let alone the important shipments of grain, and a fight breaks out. The PCs, at the same time, discover that a trader has arrived who has the following things. See if you can work out the adventure based on this list. Faye wild fat cats, which are multicolored, very super soft, super fluffy, very cute cats who have the ability to teleport up to 100 feet in any direction at will. Uh, they also have a barrel of gnomish fire crystals, which are explosives in my world, multiple vials of garlic water, a cloak of temporary invisibility, it grants invisibility for three rounds once per day, and a flute that seems to be able to control the fat cats and then six greater healing potions. So that's what they arrive and they try to sell at the tavern quite publicly and the cats, the fat cats, escape. They disappear out amongst the um, PCs, one of them hides in the PCs backpack, they just disappear. What the PCs will discover is that their guard duty is incredibly boring. This is the MacGuffin, if you will, of the entire adventure. Nothing is happening except that they're starting to see more fat cats. The dwarves have become rowdier and rowdier, and Lord Barris has now expelled them from the city. Well, when I say expelled, Lord Barris has decreed that dwarves are no longer allowed in the citadel, except that most of the dwarves have already left. Now, Lord Barris has a assistant of sorts. His assistant's name is Darwin. And Darwin is very keen on the PCs protecting the grain and will check the grain daily, going into the three different silos to make sure that the grain is still in good condition. To make sure that the PCs aren't the ones at risk, uh, Darwin does require them to leave the guard chamber and the three silos. So for the next couple of days, the fat cats continue to multiply en masse, Darwin continues to check the grain, and things start to become a bit problematic as the fat cats start to become thousands. Uh, food within the city starts to become a problem. The Lord Barris becomes very worried that the silos are possibly going to be attacked by these fat cats who can teleport through walls, and so ask the PCs to step up their protection. The PCs will notice a fat cat walking towards the silos and then disappearing inside the silo. This, hopefully, will prompt them to look inside the silo where they will discover a whole bunch of very, very dead fat cats, unfortunately. The cats have all been poisoned. The grain has been poisoned for quite some time and uh, is completely useless. When Lord Barris discovers that the grain has been poisoned, he will summon Darwin, who will immediately demand the arrest of the PCs because, well, the only ones who've been around it are the PCs. Now, one of the things that can happen, the PCs, of course, can refute this and say, well, actually, Darwin, you've been going in and out of it, but they don't really have any evidence. The fat cats will react to Darwin just as well as they reacted to the dwarves. Now, the fat cats hissed and snarled at the dwarves for no apparent reason and are very friendly to everybody else. When they hiss and snarl at Darwin, the PCs hopefully will realize that Darwin has an enchantment upon him, a detect magic would work as well, and that Darwin is actually a dwarvish operative who has been poisoning the grain for weeks, making sure that nothing goes down to those treacherous dark elves. If the PCs capture Darwin, he will then reveal that he has a giant vat of gnomish fire crystals buried underneath the citadel, ready to explode. All he needs to do is give the signal and dwarves will detonate this barrel, of course. The Lord Barris desperately asks the PCs, please, 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 I beg of you, go and destroy this um, explosive. So the PCs have to find their way under the citadel and then liberate the uh, gnomish fire crystals from the dwarves down there, 
prevent the dwarves from doing their dastardly deed and report back to Lord Barris. Now, the grain has been ruined. There's all sorts of calamities there, leading on to another adventure where the PCs have to go and secure a grain supply from, let's say, the orcs to make it much more complicated and more of a diplomatic mission after this investigative one. And so that is the adventure. So it's a bit of a twist on both of those originals. You can get the entire adventure, like I said, from our website, www.greatgamemaster.com. And although the way I've explained it is, I don't want to say mundane, but all adventures are when you sort of lay it out there. There are some twists that I left out as well, by the by, just to keep it interesting for you to read that adventure. When it runs, I bet you your players are going to be going all over the place. And even if they discover Darwin is a dwarf way before they discover that the grain has been poisoned, that's fine. He still has his out, the explosives underneath, and he'll hold the Citadel hostage, demanding that he gets released free without any recrimination, without any uh, punishment, etc., etc., and, uh, of course, that's up to the PCs to decide if they do that or not. Uh, big thank you to Dungeon Fog for letting me use their software to create this adventure. And to the author 13 for inspiring this entire thing and for putting that challenge. Now, if you want to do the same thing, head on over to discord.gg forward slash great GM. And under video topic suggestions, you can make a suggestion as well. I'm happy to do this. It's a lot of fun and uh, pretty cool. Anyway. What are your thoughts? How would you have adapted Trouble with Tribbles? And uh, what would you have done differently? Anyway, until next time, massive thank you to all my wonderful patrons who keep the lights on. As you can see, there's lots of them. Uh, quite a lot of them, actually. Quite shiny. And until next time, I wish you and yours the very happiest of gaming.